Okay, let's face it. Most of us at some point in our analog photography journey have been affected by light leaks. I'm Linus, and today I'll be going over some common sources of light leaks, how to identify them, and how to prevent them from happening so you can shoot your film with confidence. Let's go. Okay, let's start with the types of light leaks. Broadly speaking, light leaks fall into one of four main categories. Camera light seals, 120 medium format fat rolls, light piping into 35 millimeter cassettes, and in proper developing tank loading. First, let's talk cameras. At its core, a camera is simply a light type box. Film cameras use two main types of seals to block unwanted light from reaching the film and exposing it. So the most common type of light seals found in a camera are made of a special kind of foam. Placed strategically around certain openings in the camera, like the hinged door on this Olympus XA. And most of us are using film cameras that are several decades old, so it's understandable that these foam light seals have deteriorated over time. For this and many other reasons, sending your film camera to a qualified repair technician for a CLA, which is short for clean, lubricate, and adjust, is usually a great idea. Your repair technician may suggest that your camera's light seals need replacing if necessary, and there are also light seal replacement kits available online that are not too difficult to install if you're in a DIY mood. Also, many popular camera models have dedicated light seal kits that fit them perfect, but generic light seal kits can be cut down to size with a blade or a knife. Other seals are mechanical in nature, like the bottom plate of this Leica. They operate on the concept that light doesn't bend around corners very well. For mechanical seals like this, there's not really any maintenance required, but if there's any brassing or wearing of the black paint or the edges of that press fit seal are dented or warped, it is possible that the seal could fail and let light into the camera. You can usually identify light leaks that come from your camera as areas of odd or uncharacteristic fogging that occur through the roll with consistent spacing. With black and white film, once you scan it, light leaks will appear bright. With color negative film, once scanned, light leaks may appear a variety of different colors depending on where the light hit the film. There's no universal look to a light leak caused by failed camera seals. The location and condition of the seal will influence the severity of the fogging and where it appears on the film. As a reminder, when light enters a lens, it is projected upside down and backwards on the film plane. Keeping this in mind and noting the direction the film is actually traveling in the camera can help further identify if the light leak is located in the top, bottom, left, or right side of the camera. Now, 120 medium format fat rolls. Another potential source of light leaks comes from 120 medium format fat rolls. 120 film comes in tightly wound spools. Inside, the film is taped to a light-proof backing paper. As you shoot and advance the film through a camera, it unrolls from the supply side spool and winds onto a take-up spool. If the film is not wound tightly onto the take-up spool, light may be able to enter from the ends and leak onto the film, exposing it. This looseness is often described as a fat roll. Fat rolls can be caused by a camera malfunction as well as improper handling after shooting. 120 film comes with some kind of adhesive strip at the end that's used to prevent the roll from unfurling itself. This usually appears in the form of some kind of adhesive sticker that must be moistened like a postage stamp. When unloading your camera, always twist the roll while pulling the paper tight around the spool to make sure it is secured tightly. If one were to let a roll of 120 film sit unsecured, it would over time unfurl itself and begin to allow light leaks in from the ends. Adhesives are imperfect, and it's sometimes possible that the sticker could still fail. For this reason, some film shooters like to wrap a rubber band or a hair tie around their exposed 120 rolls just to be safe. Light leaks resulting from fat rolls will appear around the edges of the film and penetrate a certain depth towards the center of the roll. Now, let's talk about light piping in parts, starting with 35 millimeter film packaging. Although it's uncommon, light leaks can occur from light piping into a 35 millimeter film cassette. Cassettes are usually made of metal and have felt at the opening that helps prevent light from coming in and exposing your film. This felt is not 100% light tight, especially if the cassette is being reused for bulk loading, like with recycled cassettes or plastic reusable ones. Cassette felt wears out quickly and the metal lips can flex, meaning that reused cassettes will not block light as well as a brand new factory spooled cassette after even one use, not to mention that scratches can be caused by debris collected in the felt. Because the felt isn't 100% light tight, film manufacturers Manufacturers regularly state that film should be loaded in subdued light. 
Usually, turning your bag to the sun when outdoors is sufficient. And after you've shot the roll, it's also a good idea to put the cassette back into the plastic container it came in and keep it in a dark place before processing it promptly. Some canisters are an opaque black and these do a better job at blocking out light than clear or frosted ones. An opaque film storage case can also help prevent light from piping into the cassette if left out in the sun. If you haven't followed those best practices and you haven't noticed any light piping, you can likely thank anti-halation layers for saving your bacon. An anti-halation layer is a coating on the base of the film that helps prevent reflections within the film base. The anti-halation layer can also help block light from traveling along the film base if it makes it through the felt into the cassette. Remjet is a carbon-based layer applied to Kodak's color-negative motion picture films. It has many purposes, one being an anti-halation layer. Although it is very effective at blocking most light, it is hazardous to still photography processing. And that's why still photography films such as Cinestill 50D and 800T do not have a traditional Remjet layer like that found on motion picture films. When light hits a piece of film, the acetate can act like a fiber optic cable bouncing the light inside and exposing the film. Light piping manifests as vertical light leaks that extend the width of the film. They start out thickest and strongest at the beginning of the roll and repeat every wrap, growing fainter the deeper into the roll the light has traveled. The severity of the light leak and how deeply into the roll it travels is a function of the amount of light the film has been exposed to. Also, whether or not the film leader is sticking out of the cassette has a significant effect. A cassette sitting outside of a light-proof, opaque container for a longer time will exhibit more light piping than if it had been sitting for a shorter time. Okay, that was quite a bit of info on light piping, so let's sum up this specific source of light leaks with some simple conclusions and best practices. 35mm cassette felt is not 100% light tight. Reusing cassettes increases the likelihood of light piping and scratches. All 35mm film can suffer light piping. Films with no anti-halation layer are more sensitive. Always load film in subdued light if possible. When finished shooting, rewind your leader into the cassette. Store exposed film in opaque containers until processing. And lastly, light leaks from developing tank loading errors. The last category of light leaks we'll be covering today involves developing tank loading errors. Film is sensitive to light, so any light that hits during the process of loading the film into the developing tank will cause a light leak. The easiest way to load your film into a developing tank is in a dark room. A common issue, however, is that people underestimate how dark it needs to be. For example, if you let your eyes adjust for about 10 to 15 minutes, you may be amazed how much light can seep in from under and around the door frame. In addition, it's a good idea not to have your phone, watch, or any other potential light emitting devices in the room with you if you're choosing to load your film like this. On the topic of darkroom safe lights, you cannot load most film under a red or amber safe light. Doing so will instantly fog your film. All color films and almost all current black and white films will be fogged by a safe light, so it's best to avoid them entirely. How do I get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, it's critical that you don't accidentally skip placing your reels onto the central column of your developing tank, as that's how the light sealing function of your daylight developing tank works. For going, the central column will allow light to enter your tank and fog your film. Okay, that was a lot. We covered camera light seals, 120 medium format, fat rolls, light piping into 35 millimeter cassettes, and improper dev tank loading. There's a lot of different ways that light leaks can appear, and sometimes they can add character and uniqueness to your film. What we like to call happy accidents. Some people even fog their film on purpose for creative effect. However, we hope this video on light leaks helped show you how you can have more control over unwanted light leaks and provide you with more methods to preventing them in the future. As always, I'm Linus. I'll see you next week. That was excellent. Thank you.